And welcome to our weekly live stream. Now, we didn't have one last week because I was in Israel, but we are back with you from our studio in Hendersonville, just outside of Nashville. Pam Case with me. She is our senior producer for the show, which we have a great show this weekend. We'll tell you about a little later. But for our live stream, we are thrilled to be able to invite you to send some questions. You can send them in the chat or you can uh, send a super chat to us, get a lot more mobility. You may notice that we have moderators watching the chat for your questions. We'll get to as many as we can today. We remind you, we'd like for you to subscribe to the channel. Hit that little notification bell that you see before you on the screen and be sure to leave a comment, a like, and a share. Uh, you may notice I'm struggling a little bit with the voice today. Yeah, you did a lot it's, of talking uh, over in Israel. I did a lot of talking and being on an airplane for 12 and a half hours over and 12 and a half hours back, it will do something to you with the dry air of an airplane cabin. I don't feel bad, I just don't sound that great, but we'll get through this just fine. On today's live stream, we've got a lot of topics we're going to cover. We'll talk about the baby formula shortage, why we have it and who's doing something about it or nothing. We'll uh, introduce you to the new press secretary at the White House and see how she's getting along. And we will discuss something that I'm sure you're very familiar with, the incredibly high price of gasoline. Now, every week we always look for a favorite comment from last week. We had a doozy this week. Last week's live stream uh, prompted this comment from Mark Barger, who says this, Voting for Biden is like hiring Norman Bates to run your hotel. That's got to be not just the best line of the week. That may be one of the best lines Ever. of the year. <laughs> Mark, you need to be doing comedy writing. I don't know what you do for a living, but if it's not comedy writing, you've missed your call. Now, this week's question, uh, pretty straightforward and simple. I got a question that I would like for you to uh, respond to and send us your thoughts on it. But... Before I ask it, let me show you this clip that happened this week in the hallowed halls of the U.S. Congress. What do you say a woman is? I believe that everyone can identify for themselves. Okay. Um, do, do you believe then that men can become pregnant and have abortions? Yes. Well, that's, I mean, just amazing. I think when I hear that, it reminds me of this line that Adam Sandler and uh, his character, Billy Madison, prompted. Here it is. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. You see, I think that's what that congressman should have said to the woman in uh, giving testimony, who actually said, when asked, what's a woman? She says, well, it's whatever you identify. Really? Okay. And then, can men get pregnant and have abortions? And she pauses for a half second and then says, yes. So here's my follow-up question. Not, this is not my question for you. Well, let me give you the question for you first. Here's the question. Do you believe that men can be pregnant or have abortions? Leave your answers in the chat and in the comments section below. My reaction was that if I were that congressman, the follow-up would have been, well, then can you tell me of any instance in the entire world where a biological man has gotten pregnant. Right. Where did that happen? And can you cite any figure whatsoever that any biological man had an abortion or had to have an abortion or even needed uh, or had the biological capacity to have an abortion? Right. Never. Never. Not Never. ever. Not a. It's just Crazy. bizarre. People like that are stark, raving lunatics. And I'm tired of trying to be so polite and be thoughtful of their feelings. Sometimes you just got to say, that's just stupid. And we're not going to sit here and pretend that, that you're okay to make comments like that. Yeah. 
It should be called out. By the way, time. did you know that in Oregon, the state of Oregon, the entire state, the schools there, from the time of first grade forward, in the men's, not men's, boys, because in the first grade they're not men, they're boys, from the first grade forward in every public school in Oregon, the boys' restrooms have to contain feminine hygiene products. What? Because in case the boy, six years old, identifies as female, they want to make sure that he, she, it, whatever, has access to feminine hygiene products. First of all, six-year-old girls don't usually need hygiene products. And I'm real sure that six-year-old boys don't. Yeah, no, that's a first for me. I learn something new every time we're together. So the, wow. if you're a taxpayer <laughs> in Oregon, congratulations. Wow. Your tax dollars at, at work. work. Your kids may not know how to read, write, or even know their colors, but if they're feeling feminine at age six, they can get a feminine hygiene product in the boys' restroom. That's you can't make this stuff up. Wow. Well, this week, uh, it's interesting that even some of the mainstream network people and people clearly on the far left are getting a little tired of the Biden administration's lack of action on things that matter to people. The baby formula crisis has prompted Mika Brzezinski of MSNBC to ask some pretty pointed questions of the Surgeon General. Let's watch. So my question is, why isn't there the same mobilization here in America for this crisis? I mean, mothers are being told to go to websites or to drive hours or to drive formula that might make their babies sick. Are we really here? And what is solving the problem, not in a matter of weeks, but when are we going to see formula in the mouths of babies in America without any stress in terms of getting it? I mean, I've seen Mika all bent out of shape over conservatives for years first time I've seen her get that upset over people on the left. Uh, because how do you defend this? And Nancy Pelosi weighed in on the baby formula crisis as well. Now you have to listen carefully because she's a bit confused in her word salad of how to get it out, but you'll get the picture. In addition to all of this, we have to subject these companies to some scrutiny about the safety of this and, <clears throat> and how it, we got to a place well, we have babies crying in our country because they're hungry yeah. and the shelves are bare. We have to fill them immediately. Well, Nancy, I don't know if anyone's maybe shared this with you, but your party, you're the Speaker of the House, and it's run by Democrats. The U.S. Senate is run by Chuck Schumer, a fellow Democrat, and all the Democrats. And the White House is under the control of Joe Biden, who's a Democrat. You guys have the whole, uh, the whole thing. You got the White House, the House, and the Senate. And so if you're really bumbling about what's going on, you might want to have a committee of three and sit down and talk about the leadership you've given to this country, the supply chain crisis that you've yet to address, and why so many people are pretty ticked off at what the heck is happening. Now, on May the 13th, not long ago, Joe Biden claim that they would have had this problem solved if they were more clairvoyant. Should you have taken those steps sooner before parents got to these shelves and, and couldn't find formula? If we'd been better mind readers, I guess we could have. From everything I've, I've known, and FDA has kept me apprised of this from last year, uh, we have been moving as quickly as we can. Well, famous words of Scooby-Doo, I mean, here you got the president saying, we couldn't see this coming. And then the head of health and human services says, oh, we've known about this for a year. Well, which is it? Did you know about it for a year and you're just too incompetent to deal with it? Or is it that it snuck up on you because you're not good mind readers? Look, the only thing Joe Biden can read, and that's not real good, is a teleprompter. He doesn't read minds. He can't really know what's in his own mind, much less what is in someone else's. So I'll cut him some slack on that. He's not a mind reader. But it's amazing to me, truly amazing, that he pretends like, well, we didn't see this coming at all. But his own cabinet secretary says, oh, yeah, we've known about this for a year. Mm -hmm. If you're struggling with it, there's your leadership. You keep voting for those guys, and that's what you're going to keep getting. 
hey, you know what you're going to be getting? If you subscribe to the channel, you'll be getting notifications of when we're going to be doing these. So hit the subscribe button, notification bell. Leave us a comment, a like, as well as a share. We'd love to hear from you. Get those chats coming in. We're going to be taking uh, your questions in a moment. But to tell you just how bad things have gotten for the Biden administration, of all people, this is not a Fox News poll. This is a CNN poll. They love themselves some Joe Biden a whole bunch. They have defended and covered for him all the time he's been in the White House. But they can't really pretend that these numbers aren't real. Here's CNN giving the latest on polling numbers for Joe Biden also asked folks to get a sense about how things are going in the U.S. And look at this, Aaron. 65% of Americans in our brand new CNN poll tonight say they are concerned about how things are going in the U.S. Only 4% excited, 10% optimistic. Even one in five say that they are scared. That's 86% of the American people are either concerned or scared about the way things are going. 86%, only 4% say they're excited. And you figure that those are the people who occupy institutions and really are not worried about a thing because they're seeing lollipops and rainbows wherever they skip and hop. It's just pretty bizarre. But when CNN yeah. doesn't even cover that up and they just go ahead and tell you how bad things are perceived, uh, it kind of gives you a picture. There was no way to twist that, though. I mean... No. No, no way to turn that one you, around. You can't, some things you can spin, you that one, that. you can s try to spin it, but it doesn't no move. Yeah. What questions are we getting today? All right, let's start with a question. First up today with Jay Luther, the very first person to throw out a question today. Jay, thank you. How does the governor feel about the massive cash spigot to Ukraine and the military industrial complex? Uh, I, I'm sure Jay is talking about the uh, $40 billion mm -hmm. that was just approved. Exactly. Uh, several Republicans voted against that. I understand that we would have some desire to help with military hardware, but I understand what Jay is saying. $40 billion is a lot of dough. Was this a loan or was this an outright gift? And if it was, did it come at the expense of taking care of such things as putting baby formula back on the shelves, lowering gasoline prices for taxpayers in America? I'm very sympathetic with the people of Ukraine. Um, this was an unprovoked war, an unprovoked invasion on a people who did not want to be Russian, because if they had wanted to be that, they could have been. And so uh, the bombing of innocent civilians, children, elderly people, non-combatants, it's horrifying. Mm. And uh, you know, if we can help stop that, then from a humanitarian standpoint, uh, I think there's some moral uh, obligation that we do what we can do. I want to be clear. The Ukrainian government and President Zelensky has never asked the U.S. to put soldiers on the ground and to fight the war for him. All he's asked, give them some, some tools and equipment. We need to keep it at that because it's not our job to do their fighting for them. What else okay. we got? Yeah, sure thing. Uh, uh, Glenn says, hello from Florida. What's going on with the Sussman trial? I hope you're getting my daily newsletter. Uh, you can get it, by the way, for free at MikeHuckabee.com. We've been covering it extensively uh, because you're not reading about it except in a few websites like Town Hall and, and others. <clears throat> uh, New York Post is covering it pretty well. We're trying to cover it very well in our newsletter every day, but the latest... And it's pretty shocking. Michael Sussman is the attorney, pardon me, let me have a drink of water. That is this throat thing <coughs> that I'm dealing with. Michael Sussman is the attorney who went to James Baker at the FBI and said, I've got some information. He said, I'm not coming as a campaign operative, just coming as a friend. But he was coming as a campaign operative because he billed the Hillary Clinton campaign for the time that he spent with James Baker. He's on trial for lying. I think they got him dead to right on that, but we'll see. But the implications of this whole trial are a little frightening. Trial's happening in Washington, D.C. The judge is an Obama uh, appointee, Chris Cooper. Chris Cooper's wife is the defense attorney for 
wait for it, Lisa Page, the lover of Peter Strzok, who was also at the high levels of the FBI and who helped concoct this whole notion of Donald Trump and Russian collusion. Michael Sussman took information saying that there was collusion between Trump and Russia. He knew it was a lie. He knew it was. He also was working for the campaign. And just today on the witness stand, Robbie Mook, who was the Hillary Clinton campaign chair, admitted that Hillary herself was told about all of these goings on. So the idea that this was just a couple of bad apples acting on their own, that's not true. Sworn testimony is revealing mm -hmm. how serious it is. Will Sussman be convicted? I don't know. It's hard to see a Washington jury and by the way, a couple of the people on the jury admitted that they had given money to Hillary. Others admitted that they were hardcore Trump haters. So it's not exactly an objective jury. So if they convict him, it'll be a miracle. But conviction or not, the truth is coming out. And we find out there was Russian collusion, but it wasn't Donald Trump. It was the Hillary Clinton campaign, the FBI, and the FISA court, which is very, very disturbing. Um, I'm going to go to a clip now. This is... Peter Ducey, Fox News correspondent at the White House, and the new press secretary, which is Katrina Jean-Pierre. Um, and Peter Ducey asked her about putting new taxes on corporations and how that's going to make life better for you, the American family. Watch. But how does raising taxes on corporations lower the cost of gas, the cost of a used car, the cost of food for everyday Americans? So look, I think we encourage those who have done very well, right, especially those who care about climate change uh, to support a fair ta tax code that doesn't change, that doesn't charge manufacturers, workers, cops, builders, a higher percentage of their earnings, that the most fortunate people in our nation and not let this, this, that stand in the way of reducing energy costs and fighting this ex existential problem, if you think about that as an example. I, I hope you got something out of that because she was very clearly reading from her prepared script not just notes, that's a script with the exact words and she's reading them, never looking up. What's interesting, the, I think she turned to the wrong page. She's reading something that's gobbledygook that had nothing to do with Peter Ducey's question. It's like if I'm standing out in the middle of, uh, of a street and a large uh, satellite falls from the sky and hits the street in front of me and the cops come and say, what did you see? And I say, you know, the sky is very blue today. It was blue yesterday, maybe blue tomorrow, but it may be white if the clouds are there. I'm really not sure, but it's certainly a color and we all have to be more concerned about what color the sky is. Mm. I am ignoring the question. That's exactly what she did. And the truth is she doesn't have an answer because the White House is not doing anything to help you, the American public, deal with the high cost of groceries, gasoline, utilities, and uh, the incredible cost of inflation. Now, um, if you wonder how she doing on the job as White House Press Secretary, she got a command of it? Watch this and you tell me. I have not seen that specific uh, data that you're speaking of, so I don't, I don't have an update on that. I will have to check in with our team to see if we have something to share. I just don't have an update, but I, I understand the question. No, it's a, it's a very good question. I don't have an update on that. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, to go back and, and get that. I don't have anything specific on that. I don't have, it's not, it's not my place from here, this podium. So I don't have any update for, for you on that. Can you say that again? What, what came back? I don't have a timeline on, on that. Boy, that's some real solid answers coming from the White House press book. She has so much to report huh. back now. Yeah. They won't be able to ask her questions at the next press conference because she's got to report back on all of that. They'll have to hire 10 new people just to help <laughs> just research. Just to cover it all. <laughs> well, let's see if we do a better job of answering questions than she does. Have we well, got I think we can. I'll tell you this. We've got some, uh, some responses to today's question of the day. Do you believe men can be pregnant or have abortions? What do you think the answers are there, Gov? Hmm. <laughs> oh, I'd like to think that the people who watch our live stream 
haven't lost their mind. They I have like to not. Think that they have an IQ above plant life and <laughs> a stalk of broccoli. So let's see, do they? Yes, it's 99% <laughs> no and the rest absolutely zero. So I'm sure a couple of votes and maybe they're still trying to determine, but yeah, 99%. Wow, no. okay. So, uh, and related to that, Warhoss is asking a question here. If man could get pregnant and have an abortion, then why then do the liberal protesters demand men shouldn't have a say in the abortion law? It's one of the most amazing inconsistencies of the liberal argument. It's like one day men can just be women because they say they are. And the next day, if men don't have a uterus, they can't have any opinion as it relates to abortion. It can't be both. Right. But I'll circle back on that and get with you. I don't have any information on Maybe that right now. Maybe next week you can have some See answers. See what we can find. <laughs> <laughs> All right. JV is asking, should the federal government end the electric car tax credit? Well, probably because it's basically picking winners or losers. Uh, the electric car tax credit was given uh, to incentivize people buying electric cars. But why is it the purpose of the government to decide what kind of car we buy? Uh, when the marketplace creates an environment which an electric car is cost compatible to a gasoline driven car and it's mechanically superior and uh, people like the way it drives, we're gonna move toward electric cars. But until then, why should the government start pushing us in a direction that it wants us to go even before the marketplace is ready? So I tend to agree with you. Uh, government subsidies for such things really are not the role of what a government should do it's the marketplace, the private sector, that should build a product that is so attractive, so compelling, that people want it. I'll give you an example. Why do so many people want MacBooks instead of PCs? Mm. Because they like the way they operate. Now, the, if the government started saying, we'll pay you extra money to buy a MacBook, an Apple product over a PC, uh, all the PC people would say, wait, that's unfair. Why are you picking one product over the other? good point. So um, I, I tend to be a little bit more of a purist as much as I can, mm -hmm. and that would mean the government ought to stay out of it. Tim Schaefer mm -hmm. is asking this afternoon, Governor, does the uncertainty in the stock market raise concerns about higher inflation and a bad recession in our near future? It absolutely does. And just remember that inflation is an involuntary tax uh, hike on you. Because if your dollar is no longer worth a dollar and it's now because of inflation worth 75 cents, you've lost 25% of your spending power. So even if you got a 25% raise from your job, you're only holding even and treading water. If you have a 10% increase in your salary, which most of you won't, and you lose 25% of your spending power because of inflation, you've actually lost 15% of your buying power, which means for everything you spend, you're in the hole 15%. You bet it matters. All right, thank you. Governor, uh, Douglas Newcomer asking today, when Biden's press secretary says the wealthy should pay <laughs> more taxes, does this include Biden and his administration? Oh no, they, they don't mean that, good grief. Uh, Douglas, you, you gotta be kidding. Certainly you don't think that the people who make the rules would actually live by them. Why, you've become a cynic, Douglas. I can't believe you would even ask such a question. Of course, <laughs> I'm being cynical, as you can clearly tell. Uh, I wanna go to another clip. This is uh, ABC. So we're beginning to see little tinges of integrity out of the media. Not a lot, but a little bit. This is ABC reporting on fuel prices for Americans. Let's watch. For the first time, all 50 states now have an average price of $4 for a gallon of unleaded gas. That's according to a report by AAA. Three states, Georgia, Kansas, and Oklahoma, have all surpassed an average of $4 a gallon this week for the first time, now joining the rest of the country. Yeah, the average price across the country, $4.59.9 per gallon. That's an average of all 50 states. By the way, Two years ago, under President Trump, gasoline, on average, $1.87. Think about that. Yeah. So if you 
if you say, I don't mind paying those gas prices because I have a president that doesn't tweet mean things, you deserve high gas prices. Some of us don't mind the tweets. What we mind is not having the same amount of money to help our families, give to our churches, and to buy the things we want to buy because we're having to just pay 20% and, and sometimes 50% more for the same things just to make ends meet. So uh, the Biden administration, by the way, really wants gas to stay expensive. Some people say, why don't they do more? Because they don't want to do more. I, I don't know how to break this to you, but let me try it as gently as I can. The reason that Joe Biden is not doing the things that would actually bring prices down in energy is because his goal is to get rid of oil and gas, move us to this nebulous green energy, and he doesn't care how much it's going to cost because he thinks it's that important. Here is his energy secretary, former Michigan governor Jennifer Granholm, basically admitting it. We accelerate the move to clean energy because ultimately a move to clean energy is the homegrown, secure kind of energy that will make us independent. What she should have said is we celebrate the move to expensive energy. We want it to bust you and your family. We want to make it impossible for you to go see grandma this summer. We're going to keep you from taking a vacation so that you'll stay home. And maybe with enough government subsidies, You'll buy an electric car, which, by the way, I read an article this week. Electric cars actually, in many cases, have more environmental impact than gas-driven cars. Who knew? There's your rut row. It is, there. for <laughs> a actual fact. And uh, from the White House press podium, I'll play this one also. This is uh, uh, Peter Ducey again asking uh, Press Secretary uh, Katrina Jean-Pierre about these high gas prices and what are Americans to do because it's pointed out the average American family will spend five thousand dollars more this year just on gasoline watch final question on gas prices Americans are now spending five thousand dollars a year on gasoline that's almost double what they did a year ago where are people supposed to go to get all that extra cash? To get the extra cash to pay for gas? Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that we've been very clear about is to do everything in our power uh, to make sure uh, that we lower costs. Uh, you know, it is important. We see it. The president understands what the American people is, are, is going through. Uh, no, he doesn't. Joe Biden hadn't taken the nozzle uh, out of a gas pump in years. Somebody drives him wherever he goes. Do you think he's worried about uh, going up to the pilots of Air Force One and saying, hey, um, how much fuel are we going to burn on this sucker if I make this trip to South Korea this week? How much is it going to cost for me to fly to Delaware every single weekend, as he has done since he's been president? Do you think Joe's really concerned about it, that he's going to take up a collection from maybe his son Hunter, who has money stashed away in a suitcase somewhere? Pretty sure that's not going to be the case. So it just shows how utterly uh, ridiculous this can be. Absolutely. A couple of super chats I wanted to mention today, just a thank you to Oscar Sayans uh, for his super chat today. And as Stephanie Ellis said to us today through her super chat, Gov, sometimes I ask you questions just so I have an excuse to financially support you. Is there a way to financially support you that is tax deductible? <laughs> <laughs> to support me? Yes. Apparently. No, there isn't because I'm not a nonprofit uh, now, you know, um, I have a political action committee that I use to give money to candidates. I don't get a penny from it, not a penny. Uh, we give all the money to candidates in races where they are pro-life. That's a criteria. But it, political contributions are not tax deductible. For those things, I would suggest organizations like, first, your local church for your tithe. And above that, organizations like Samaritan's Purse, uh, Fellowship of uh, International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, other great organizations that are doing good work. You know, we're going to have a big show this weekend. I'm pretty excited because one of our guests is Steve Forbes, who's one of the few people who can talk economics and actually make sense of it. Absolutely. A lot of stuff coming. We won't, before we let you know about our show, please leave questions for us in the comments section. 
and I hope you've already subscribed, but if not, do that right now. Hit the notification bell. We're not going to have a live stream next week because it's leading up to Memorial Day weekend, but we will have a fresh, brand new show for Memorial Day weekend. We're so glad you've joined us. Be sure and watch The Huckabee Show this weekend, Saturday, 8 and 11 Eastern, Sunday, 9 Eastern. Why do you want to watch? Here's why right here. This week on Huckabee, business mogul Steve Forbes, NBA star Jonathan Isaac stands for America, celebrating National Motorcycle Month, killer comedy with killer bees, then bust up all your good stuff, <laughs> including dreams and plans. Watch Huckabee on Saturday at 8, 7 central and again on Sunday at 9, 8 central right here on TBN.